Hi everyone. So we're actually not traveling again. Yeah, and uh, um, we want to talk about a couple of things that we think is really important for people to know if you're, they're considering the RV lifestyle, I guess. And so we'll talk about that today. Update you on what's been going on with us, and we'll share. Not a lot. <laughs> and we'll share um, a hike that we did recently and also a paddle that Gordon did with uh, some friends. So we hope you enjoyed this video. So last year I think we did um, a video called uh, lessons learned or maybe a couple of years ago we did that and I, I think um, in the last few weeks I guess for us there was a couple of important lessons and we wanted to share them with you. Uh, the first one is expect the unexpected and um, you know we were all gung-ho once the BC Parks had their new website up and we went ahead and booked a whole bunch of sites and planned <laughs> some <several>. trips <laughs> and none of them came to pass and we ended up having to cancel so um, unfortunately that's life and I think the reasons why that happened is a few fold. One was uh, trips that I was looking at doing say with a friend people came down with COVID so that <laughs> kind of got cancelled. Then um, the weather has been just bad I mean we've had unseasonably cold spring, probably somewhere between five to 10 degrees cooler, depending on where you are. And we had actually some uh, viewers of ours reach out to us. They'd been traveling, they have a, a Zion and had been traveling in the United States and came up to Vancouver Island in the early part of the spring, hoping to enjoy a wonderful spring. And after a couple of weeks, they got off Vancouver Island because it was cold and it was wet. And they've gone to the interior where it's still kind of cold and kind of wet, mm -hmm. but a little warmer than it is here. So. You know, the weather just was bad. We were actually right now supposed to be at Strathcona Park on Vancouver okay. Island. And when we looked at the weather forecast, it was going to be snowing and, you know, not a lot of snow. We could get through the snow portion, but it was, you know, minus two, minus three at night, a little bit of snow. And then during the day, it was like plus three and cloudy or rainy. And that's just, you know, we, we spent a lot of time trying to avoid the rain, but just sitting there camped in the cold and in the rain wasn't going to be a lot of fun. So that was one of the trips that, that we canceled. Yeah, it's been unseasonably cold this year, this spring in BC. And, you know, the weather patterns have really changed in the last few years. Uh, and maybe maybe we're getting older and just getting <laughs> getting pickier because yeah. we don't really we don't really want to. And there, there's some substance to that, too, or some rationale behind that. You know, gas prices here right now are really high. They're running about uh, $2.23 a yeah. liter. And that would be roughly just under $7.50 US a gallon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really want to think about some of the places we go to where, you know, last year the price of gas was probably around $1.60 a liter, uh, still expensive. Uh, but this year it's substantially more. Mm -hmm. So it just makes us, you know, give some thought to where we're going. And certainly we want to make sure when we get there that at least we're likely going to be able to enjoy where we're at and if it's going to be just above freezing and constantly raining that's not going to happen. Yeah and you guys know that we enjoy hiking in the mountains and right now you know the mountains are full of snow still and you know we're kind of tired of hiking in the snow now that <laughs> it's springtime. <laughs> and then all that said we were still going to head out last I think it was last week and we were, you know, we were at the van and I started the van and it barely started and the check engine light came on, you know, all the lights come across the dashboard. And, yeah. and so we didn't know what that was. So we weren't about to go on a several hundred kilometer drive mm -hmm. with the check engine light on. And the earliest I could get it into the uh, Dodge dealer was about five days later. Mm -hmm. So we took it in and it turned out, um, it was just the battery was uh, uh, getting low. And I, I noticed that when I started it. As a matter of fact, I thought when I was going to take it into the dealer, I was going to probably have to jump start it. So I you know, had to look up how to do that. And there is, um, if you're familiar with the Dodge ProMaster van, the battery is actually, it's a big battery. And it's actually right in front of uh, the driver. on the f uh, So you have to come in the cab and open it up that way. And I thought, wow, that's going to be hard to jump. It's just going to be annoying to have to take the top of the 
uh, cover off and jump the battery, but they've actually designed um, a nice jumping port at the front of the van so you can just open up the hood and there's a little negative bar that you can use as your ground and then there's a nice positive terminal that's covered and it's just literally for jump starting the van. That was good to know and <laughs> good to refresh in my mind and not have it happen when I was yeah. when we were off on the side road somewhere. So you know all of those things together, the price of gas, the bad weather, and then having the van you know not run properly uh, just have kind of stopped us from getting out uh, so again we're keen to get out it just we haven't gotten out yeah and so lesson number two actually is is the fact that you really should if you have your rv stored or your vehicle stored somewhere then you should turn it on and maybe go for a drive or let it run for a little while I think every week really we do and we've said this before we try and uh, take our van out for a drive every week or 10 days but when I was talking to the dealership they said that still they would recommend uh, a trickle charger if you can um, we don't have really a way where we store we don't have power uh, so we haven't um, hooked one up but they uh, you know this is the second battery we've had the van for four years the first battery went after one year but it was replaced under warranty and the second battery lasted about three years which is you know somewhere as you would expect three to five years and it's hard not not using a van for the winter season very much is really hard on the battery so those are the two things and a little bit of an update on what's been happening with us and we're still hoping that we'll be able to get out sometime maybe this <laughs> week or next week just checking um, the weather forecast yeah, right now actually yeah. literally and you know quite often and we've probably talked about this before but you know we've made reservations in advance and quite often we don't get to keep them so <laughs> you know i think that's why we enjoy sort of just spur of the moment Winging going it. somewhere because uh, usually we are able to get a site and we don't have to sort of schedule ourselves around the trip and um yeah so so we have one more happened. reservation uh, <laughs> with a friend of ours at the beginning of june and uh, other than that, I think we're just going to wing it for a little bit. And yeah. Except we will start to look for probably some of the busier sites in the summer and try and make reservations for those because we know that that will be unlikely that we could scoot in otherwise yeah. without. So with that, we thought we'd share with you uh, a hike that we did recently to a local regional park. Mm -hmm. I think we were going to do what's called Lynn Loop, but we ended up going a little farther and up to an area which is called the Debris Chute. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's we start on the Lin Loop and then the trail changes name, but of course we can't think of it at the moment. We'll write it down below. It was a lot of fun. I actually called it more of forest bathing. So <laughs> we were, um, and if we could, we'll, we'll put the Japanese term for it. Right <laughs> uh, but it was very, it was beautiful. You know, we had a course of I think we had rain, sun, cloud. We didn't get hailed on, but there was some hail on the ground in one section and. That's kind of representative of the weather. Last time we were here a week ago, it was hailing on us at the van. So it's just been crazy. Yeah, and it's, it's a good way to get into sort of the longer hikes, train myself back into it. Gordon's been doing hiking, but I haven't actually been hiking very much. Some hill running. Because we'll be doing a lot more hiking from now on.
unfortunately, no heavy rain, at least right now. <laughs> zigzag stairs. Zigzag knees. Yeah. The creek's not very high at all, so it's easy to get across. Mail from probably last night. Fiddleheads. It's starting to open up. You may recall a previous video where we were, uh, or I was up at Lake Lucille uh, doing a reconnaissance trip for a dive that uh, our friend Henry Wang may be doing. So yesterday Henry did the first dive and I was there providing uh, water support and um, we'll just share a couple clips of it. But the main thing about the dive was it was, uh, they found uh, a lot of interesting garbage uh, and uh, particularly near that uh, ramp that was in the uh, previous video that we showed you. And I don't want to give away all the secrets and what was found, but I, I will say all I really had to do was paddle across the lake and then tow all this garbage back, which the garbage when it's dangling from a, a, a float ball uh, <laughs> is very difficult. I was probably, you know, I was probably literally making six inches a minute and I had about 200 meters to paddle so it was a long paddle it was like I, I felt like I was actually in a tow raft as opposed <laughs> to a pack raft but we got it done so we'll have it just share a little bit of that video and then you'll have to take a look on Henry's YouTube channel when he has that uh, posted yeah. I think you'll enjoy it I think you're much better looking in a wetsuit. <laughs> it's main beach, you can see the dive trucks and canopy. Sunny, it was just raining for the last five minutes. 
Now we're heading over to the ramp, which if you watch one of our previous videos, you'll have seen. I suspect there's a lot of garbage there. But I doubt you can see with this camera, but Henry's bubbles are about there. So he's probably, oh, no, they're over there. That scooter moves quickly. There's my haul. <laughs> two, uh, two cans that were just barely in the water at the end of the cliff here. Henry's diving below the ramp and you can probably see his bubbles right there. Raining, windy, I'm only able to move the boat about six inches a minute if that. Back rafts aren't great for towing, especially something that's dragging 12 feet under in the water underneath the lift bag. <laughs> no wonder Henry is laughing when he asked me to do this. So we hope you enjoyed our video and we hope to have some camping out soon. Yeah, in the next few weeks, hopefully. I know we promised and didn't deliver last time, but hopefully we can this time. And we also want to give a shout out to a number of our viewers who are send us either emails or some comments. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, a number of people have uh, class B vans and are out on trips. A number of them are complaining about the weather like we are <laughs> and i'm sure we'll see a number of them on the road as we get back out over the next uh, week and months so if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and we will see you next time and we'll see you next time oh and finch is doing well yeah <laughs>